Hello, my name is Jason Goh. I'm the managing director of Zing Digital in Canberra, Australia. In this video, I'm going to talk about how our innovative technologies help us convert conventional publications into web accessible HTML pages. The example I'm going to use today is a report we processed for the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet about a month ago. This publication was provided to us in uh, Microsoft Word format. So this is just uh, one section of this publication in its original um, Microsoft Word file. So what we have done is a, we have a process which is based on some scripts we developed in-house to clean up this publication um, from Microsoft Word into HTML and in the meantime try to build the reference from the figures uh, into the image files and add the um, old text as well as um, text alternatives to the graphs and the figures. So the end result is this file which is one single um, HTML document with all the sections. What we do with this document next is our client required us to prepare a microsite which should have the, um, the department's um, look and feel including the coat of arms and a navigation structure, a table of content up front. And of course it needs to uh, meet the WCAG uh, 2.0 level AA requirements. So what we have done is we have this technology which is built using a open source CMS called Drupal. So our plugin will be able to break down, break down the, um, uh, the big chunky HTML as I just showed you into structured format and rebuild the references and the process all the tables and alt text and text alternatives. And we're going to have a look at the result of the product. So this is the publication we turned from this Microsoft Word document into navigatable HTML microsite. Some innovative features of this library we have created to make sure the imported, imported pages are WCAG compliant accessible. So the first feature is uh, it ensures the uh, complex data tables will automatically have IDs and headers assigned to the to the cells to the table cells. So in this example, this is a complex data table where you have um, headers spanning multiple columns. So according to WCAG, in this case. Each header should have an ID and each data cell should have a headers attribute that contains any the IDs of the headers the data cell is associated with. So normally it takes a very experienced HTML editor hours to assign IDs and headers. Our process does this in microsecond. It does this automatically on the fly while the document is important. So what this thing does, what our process does, is it scans this table and assigns an ID to the header automatically. The ID is, is uh, a random string where you can specify the, um, what sort of pattern you want to have in this, for this random string. So in this, in this very example, the male header has an ID some, something random and then all those subheaders will have a different ID and also a headers attribute that tells the screen reader that this header is associated with the header that is in the previous row, which is males. So the ID of uh, the males is for UNJU blah blah blah. And then here you can see the headers contains four UNJU blah blah blah. And then let's pick one data cell, 1.4 star. So the data cell 1.4 star 
sits under headers, males, and the ratio. So according to WCAG, it should have the IDs of both of those header cells in its headers attribute. If you remember, the ID for header cell males is for UNJU blah blah blah, which can be found here. And the next, next one is the ID of header cell ratio, which is GQSAP blah blah blah. Let's go back and have a look. So ratio is GQSAP blah blah blah. So our process does this automatically for you. Um, our process, our technology also re-establishes cross-references and footnotes for you on the fly automatically. Um, because this document doesn't have many cross-references and footnotes, I'm going to use a different example. Okay, here, this page contains a cross-reference. It says, the value of Australia's processed food and beverage exports and imports will be discussed in details in section 2.2.2 trade. So we are on section 2.1.1. So 2.2.2 is on a different page. So our process scans all those important pages and make sure none of those anchor links is broken. So in this case, if I click on section 2.2.2 from section 2.1.1, look at the URL. Um, this URL ends 211-industry-value-chain. So click on section 2.2.2. We are automatically on section 2.2.2 trade and the URL becomes something different which shows you our process successfully re-established those cross-reference links and make sure they're not broken after import. So when you're preparing a conventional publication, normally footnotes are added towards the end of each section or added towards the end of the entire publication. So, we so our process scans the imported pages and makes sure footnotes are added towards the very page where they're referenced. So in this example, section 2.2.2 trade, we have probably around 10 footnotes. Not only do we bring those footnotes to the page they're referenced, we link the footnotes and the body text together. If I click on 14, I'll be navigated to the bottom of the, this page, which, which is footnote section. The footnote section has a different CSS in this very example, which is uh, a requirement from our client. And the highlights footnote 14. If you click on the number again, you'll be taken back to where you left from. So all those, the relinking and moving footnotes are done automatically by our innovative technology. So the library itself is now available on drupal.org. If you are interested in this, uh, just search for HTML import, which is open source library. We uh, open source project we contributed to the Drupal community. They, um, we have proprietary technologies. Unfortunately, we decided not to open those ones that convert um, various formats like Microsoft Word or PDF or a Postscript into HTML and run um, scanner to make sure the converted HTML, HTML files are WCAG compliant. So in conclusion, our technologies are very accurate. It helps us to improve the efficiency when preparing WCAG compliant HTML reports for our clients. And also, it allows us to take whatever format you prefer, the clients prefer, and make sure they end up in WCAG compliant HTML. So if you're interested, send us email uh, to info at xing.net.au. Again, my name is Jason Goh. I'm the Managing Director of Zing Digital in Canberra, Australia. Thank you.